deadly and violent weekend in Baltimore. With the most murders ever through the first half of the year. One shooting after the other, making for a violent and deadly 24 hours. In several shootings from the weekend where two people have died. Shooting deaths and homicide in general in the city are up rapidly. In some neighborhoods, residents say the shootings never seem to stop. RT's Simona Rosario is in Baltimore with how residents are taking the issue into their own hands. My son and I were having a conversation last year. He was saying that the murder rate in Baltimore at the time was higher than it's ever been. And I just got angry about it. And I was on my way to work the next day and I was still mad. And I realized that because I was so upset, that must mean that I was supposed to just do something about it and not just be mad. I guess I was in some kind of mood because every, you know, all of my coworkers were like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, Man, I think we're going to have to call a ceasefire. In February, May, August, and November, there are three days where the entire city is making a vow to one another to just not be violent and to celebrate life. It is a self-determination movement, um, and so that means that people determine for themselves how they want to be involved. A group called Runners for Justice decided to do this event here and it's um, a run, walk, bike event and some community art and letting folks be in nature and, and exercise and be healthy in our community and um, also do some artwork, so doing things that are peaceful. The ceasefire is it's a movement in Baltimore to reduce the murders and reduce violence and it's about community engagement. It's about getting groups and people from the different communities to kind of step up and create events in their communities to build peace, to build unity, and it's also asking people just on a personal basis to be more peaceful and to be more intentional. Fariha and I are two members of Baltimore Rising, which is a nonpartisan organization, and our goal is to increase civic engagement across Baltimore City. And today we've decided to specifically focus on youth because of the extreme power that young people have. Kids between the ages of 16 and 21 are supposed to come here today to register, um, to learn about you know people who are running for office today, to learn about how to tackle Baltimore's most pressing issues. And so we just want you know everyone to come here today and just have a great time. I mean, there's going to be some food, some fun, some workshops, things of that nature. Well, it's important because the youth are ultimately the future of Baltimore, of Maryland, of this entire nation, of this entire world. Right now, we are hosting a free breakfast for B.O.B., Band of Brothers, an organization started when I first got in. Uh, we were looking for our missing women in D.C. Since then, we've been going uphill. Mama, we call her Mama Ceasefire, Erica Bridgeport, who put together such an illustrious organization to kind of combat the violence here in Baltimore City. The ceasefire is just to get a general message about, you know, getting everyone to put down their guns um, and get into more productivity things, proactive things in their community. Um, you know, kind of offsetting or kind of deflecting with the breakfast, you know, we're giving away free food. You know, who wants to fight or, you know, shoot during a free food event, right? So we use today as an opportunity for kids to come, get a little makeshift ceasefire passport. They'll get it stamped at the different stations that they go to throughout the day. And that is their contribution to peace in the community. I got involved because it was important for me, for my children to grow up in a community where violence is not the first thing that they have to think about. So it's important for other communities to know what Baltimore is doing so that you don't just see on the news, there's so many murders in Baltimore, there's so much crime and violence in Baltimore that you actually get to see events like this. You actually get to see people coming together that may not look alike, but they're coming together to celebrate life and to be a part of something that's bigger than the violence. Moms for Action has 
was a national project called the Mother's Dream Quilt and um, we wanted to bring it to Maryland and we felt like this Mother's Day um, ceasefire weekend was a good place to come. It's a project where mothers are working together with gun violence survivors to commemorate those who have lost. His favorite color is blue and his um, nickname was blue and he said it stands for the beginning of something. His name is Paul McMahon. I'm making a quilt today in his honor to remember him today. He the first one that made me a mother. That was the best thing. I love being a mother. So it made me feel good to honor him, you know, by talking about him, sharing the story, especially today about doing this quilt because I know that wherever he go, they are gonna know that his spirit is there. Baltimore ceasefire could be declared a success. It's now been three days since a life was taken in the city. It's important for us to remember that even though we have, you know, we have mayors and there are var various different political officials and all of that, at the end of the day, I go home to my community. I don't go home to the mayor's office. The other thing that, that the ceasefire does is really humanizes the violence in Baltimore um, because they share the names, they share the photographs whenever someone is murdered so that, you know, it's not just a number, so that we take a moment to pause and like reflect on each person's life that's lost. And it's really just a community coming together, showing an example of what it looks like, you know, for us to, to not just live communally in a peaceful environment, but for us to foster the kind of neighborhood uh, 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 community narrative that um, you don't really see commentated on when people talk about Baltimore City. It reminds people of their own personal power because a murder epidemic feels like that is something that's just so big there's nothing we can do anything about and especially like one little person can't do anything about it. But the movement gives everybody something to do even if they feel like it's a little thing. And so it reminds people of their own personal power, but then you get to see what power looks like when we share it, like all together at the same time, and how beautiful that is and how much we can actually get done because these weekends are just filled with like, the, the air in the city is magical. So the reason that it's Baltimore Ceasefire 365 is because all year round, we're doing work to help people think differently about how we respond to conflict, but even how we respond to murder, that we don't just look at it and go, oh, that's too bad, condolences to the family, and just go back to something else we were doing. But to really respond to it, that you take it personally, like, oh my goodness, this is happening in my city, what can I do to help heal this thing? And so we're not just saying that it's a three-day thing or that it's a thing that's gonna magically cure it. So we're gonna keep calling ceasefires until we feel there's not a need to call a ceasefire anymore.